Hey y'all, I'm Jasmine and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about pharmacy postgraduate training opportunities. So everything from residency programs to fellowships to entering straight into the workforce. Today's video is about what happens after you graduate and become a licensed pharmacist in your state. So if you guys are interested in those opportunities and learning more about postgraduate training and pharmacy, keep watching. Also make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to know more about me, my lifestyle, and pharmacy, and to get a dose of Jasmine. Thanks for watching, y'all. So to get the video started, I wanted to have a formalized definition of what a residency program is because honestly, before entering into pharmacy school, I had no idea that pharmacists could complete residency programs. I knew that medical students could just to pursue additional training after school, but I had no idea that there was such a thing as a pharmacy residency program. So I Googled it obviously, and the American College of Clinical Pharmacy describes a residency program as upon completion of a pharmacy program or pharmacy degree, graduates can pursue further training with either a clinical focus or a research focus. The clinical focus is for residency programs and then the research focus is for fellowships. Um, and fellowship programs are typically done by students who want to pursue things like industry and things like that post-graduation. So for me personally, I'm gonna pursue a residency program post-graduation and that's because I do enjoy the clinical side of pharmacy. Um, and I potentially want to work in a healthcare setting that allows me to utilize that clinical focus. So with residency programs, essentially my understanding or what I know about residency programs is after your fourth year of pharmacy school, once you graduate, yay, you become a licensed pharmacist by taking the NAPLEX, taking whatever law exam for your state, you're a pharmacist. Well, a residency program allows you to do additional training beyond what you learn in the classroom to learn more about what clinical pharmacy entails. It is essentially a program that's designed by whatever institution you apply for or whatever institution you do a residency program at. And that institution cultivates a program that allows you to grow more in your clinical knowledge, your professional knowledge, and some programs allow you to have educational opportunities like you can work in a classroom, teach different courses, um, and essentially work with student pharmacists while you're completing the residency training process. So in order to apply for residency programs, there are a number of things that you have to do while you're in pharmacy school to make your application stand out. So to apply for a residency program, number one, your GPA should be great. So I will say a GPA above a 3.0 for most programs. And some programs have a hard requirement. If you don't meet that GPA requirement, they won't even consider your application. Beyond GPA, you should try to have additional opportunities outside of the classroom. So co-curricular activities. So things like joining clubs and organizations, having leadership positions, having a job outside of the classroom. Those types of things let people know that you're well-rounded and you can handle a lot of opportunities at one time. And residency programs allow for, well, they need well-rounded students who can do multiple things at once. So a great GPA, great leadership opportunities. And then the last thing I would say is an added bonus if you have research experience. Um, lots of programs wanna know that you've done research while you're in pharmacy school. So if you can, try to tackle some research opportunities. So the process of applying to a residency program depends on that program and it also depends on the type of residency program you want to pursue. So I'm going to list the website on the screen that you can use to apply for multiple residency programs at once. Um, but there are also some residency programs that are not specifically clinical, so things like managed care residency programs. And for some of those, you can apply directly to that program through whatever company or organization it is. So for example, if your residency program for managed care is at Butterfly University, um, you can go specifically to Butterfly University to learn more about how to apply for that residency program. And then also to learn about residency programs, there is a conference every year is held annually in December and the program is called Mid-Year or it's a clinical conference where you can learn all about different residency programs from across the nation and it allows you to talk to representatives from those residency programs, ask questions, get to know them more, let them get to know you and it also gives you a good idea of what programs you want to apply for or what residency programs you want to pursue post-graduation. So residency programs are clinically focused mid-year the conference allows you to learn more about specific residency programs and in order to be a good candidate for a residency program post-graduation because it is competitive you want to have a good gpa participate in lots of organizations have leadership experience or work experience and then lastly make sure you have some type of research project to present at mid-year 
All right, so what exactly is a residency program? So in pharmacy practice, residency allows you to do two, one to two years of additional training after you graduate, after you become a pharmacist to let you specialize in a specific area. So a fellowship is essentially the same thing. It gives you one to two years to work in a company or do more of a research focus to learn more about the area you're interested in. And it allows you to pursue that in your career after you finish your fellowship program. So specifically for residency programs, the first year is called a general PGY-1 or general pharmacy practice residency program. And that is what allows you to learn more about different areas of pharmacy practice, inpatient and outpatient. And then a PGY-2 or a second year is a more specialized area that lets you learn more about a specific, more honed in area of pharmacy. So for example, if you want to do cardiology for your pharmacy specialty. You can do a general PGY-1, which is then followed by a PGY-2 in cardiology pharmacy. And that allows you to pursue opportunities post-graduation that make you the best candidate to become a pharmacist who specializes in cardiology. So essentially one year is for general practice and then two years of PGY-2 allows you to do more of a specialized thing. And then for fellowship programs, you essentially apply to the fellowship that you want to pursue. So different companies have different fellowships with different specialties. So you can do a fellowship program um, that specializes in, for example, pharmacovigilance. And that fellowship program will prepare you for pharmacovigilance after you graduate. So I may be at a little bit of a different angle because I've moved and it's a little bit later in the day. But I wanted to follow up because ACCP does have a list or a timeline of specific things that you should be doing in order to prepare for a residency program during your fourth year of school. I'm going to put the link down below to ACCP's website. They have great resources for residency programs and what things you can do to set yourself apart from your competition, especially if you're looking to pursue clinical pharmacy. But of course, ACCP is the go-to place to know all things about what to do and how to be a clinical pharmacist moving forward in the future. So one major aspect of the residency application process um, includes letters of recommendation and it's really, really important to create great relationships with your preceptors during your fourth year of clinical rotations because your preceptors are going to be the people that write those letters of recommendation for you. Beyond that, your boss at the place you work. So if you work in a pharmacy, your supervisor could be a letter writer, but basically identifying people who you think will speak to your work ethic, will speak to you. Um, all the things that you've done in the past in a positive light, those are the people that you want to highlight and ask to write you letters of recommendation. So once your application is already submitted, you've done all the things that you need to do within pharmacy school, you've submitted all your applications, you've attended the clinical meeting for mid-year to learn more about residency programs, it's now time to set up interviews and you have to be selected for interviews. But once you go to different programs, you have the opportunity to showcase your skills through interview preparation. And I will list a video up top um, in the cards with some interview preparation tips that I have. I've done this video in the past, but essentially the interview is a great way for you to introduce yourself, show who you are, show your personality, but also show your clinical expertise. So the interview process is what caps off or tops off absolutely everything you've submitted for the residency application process. And the most important part or one of the most important aspects of the residency application process is the match process. So once you submit your application, do all those things, there's a process called matching. And it's essentially where you have to rank the programs that you see ideal or a great fit for you. And then beyond that, the program has to rank you as one of the students that they would like to select for their residency program. So I don't know if you guys have seen, but all over social media, there's this thing called match day and pharmacy students are all over the country a little bit anxious to know where they matched or what programs selected them and which programs they selected. So essentially it's a way to make sure that the program is a good fit for you and you are a good fit for the program. So matching is the culmination of all the work that you've done to make sure, make sure that you're a good fit for that residency program. So just to wrap things up, residency programs are a way for you to get additional training after you graduate from a school of pharmacy in the United States. So there's also the option of pursuing pursuing a fellowship program, which is more of a research slash industry route. And to be quite honest, um, I don't know a great deal about pursuing fellowship programs. So what I will do is list a link down below with more information and also on the screen about fellowship programs because there are a way for you to get additional training post-graduation. It's just not what I'm choosing to do. So I don't know as much about it. 
Um, and then beyond that, you do have the option to enter directly into the workforce post-graduation after pharmacy school. So that is an option. And some people do go straight into the workforce. You get a job um, for whatever reason you may choose. However, in pharmacy, there are a number of people who are graduating with PharmD degrees or doctor of pharmacy degrees. And essentially by doing some type of post-graduate training, it makes you a little bit more competitive for jobs in the future. So if you do enter straight into the workforce, that's a great option option for you if you if you choose to um, however moving forward for some jobs there may be a minimum requirement of a residency program just because there are a lot of people who do have the same degree as you if you do graduate as a pharmacist in the US so keep in mind if you do choose to pursue a job after graduation that moving forward a residency program may be ideal for certain positions especially clinical positions um, and healthcare settings so in this video I've introduced a lot of different topics about about postgraduate training after you become a pharmacist in the US. Um, I've hit on a lot of different things. So if you guys have any questions, any video recommendations, make sure you leave them down below. I always check the comments. I always try to at least like them and respond. Um, and I always get great ideas from you guys. So if there's anything that you want to see, let me know. Any questions that you have, let me know. And anything that I need to further elaborate on with the residency process, let me know. I'm here to help you guys and tell you anything that I know about the process. And mind you, I'm still learning, but of course we can learn together. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something about residency, fellowship, or the workforce after you graduate as a pharmacist in the U.S. If you guys want to see more, make sure you click on another video. It's going to be popping up soon. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye y'all.